Hello, Screamer, and welcome to Scream Stream, your spoiler-free guide to streaming horror entertainment. I'm your host, James Gass. If you're new to the show, what I do is pick a horror movie from one of the various streaming services and give it a spoiler-free review. Scream Stream is available wherever podcasts are served, including Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and many more. Just head over to ScreamPod.com, and all those links are there. If you'd like to support me and my creations, head over to Patreon.com slash James Gass. You can also pick up some horror-themed t-shirts from the Scream Stream T Public store at tpublic.com slash stores slash scream dash stream. You'll not only be supporting the podcast, but also indie artists creating killer t-shirts as well. Pun intended. So uh, this week, I have a review from a... Uh, a Japanese American film. Um, so I guess it's, it's kind of, it's, it's made by both Japanese and American, uh, filmmakers. Um, it has mostly an all American cast with the exception of a few. Uh, and it, I don't know. It's kind of weird. Like officially it's Japan, but then, or it's, it's Japan and U.S. according to IMDb. So anyway, uh, uh, for a brief, brief plot synopsis, Gehenna, where developers are looking for a location on Saipan, stumble into a subterranean bunker from World War II where an evil force lies in wait. So this was written by Hiroshi Katagiri and Nathan Long and was directed by uh, Hiroshi Katagiri. And this stars Doug Jones, Patrick Gorman, Sean Sprawling, Catherine Taylor, and Simon Phillips. Uh, they have Lance Hendricks, Hendrickson listed as like top billing, but he's he's literally only in the film for like two minutes, and that is it. Um, which is sad because that was like the main reason why I watched this movie. Uh, otherwise, I would not have even watched it. Uh, I guess that's why they had Lance Hendrickson in the in the movie. So let me let me just start off with. Uh, with the look and production of the film. Uh, and I have to be honest, it really looked like they had two different directors of photography for like the, the first act and the rest of it. The look of, of the camera work was like completely different. Uh, in the like medium and close up shots in the first act when they're outside this bunker looked it looked really bad. They, it looked awkward. Like there was no depth of field. Like everything was in focus and it looked flat, uh, and just extremely amateurish. But once you were inside the bunker, that completely changed. It, it looked a whole lot better. And you, it, it really looks like there were two different directors of photography. Now there's only one listed on MDB, but I mean that, that could be wrong. Like they could have fired one guy and just replaced him and, not even bother to list him in the credits, which which would be kind of messed up, but still. So yeah, it looked like there's two different directors of photography. And in the first, actually, to be honest with you, the entire first act looked really bad. It was just horribly shot. Um, colors were nice and everything, uh, and some of the shots were okay, but like all of the shots involving conversation was really bad. Um, they just did not look good at all. Like the, the placement of the actors, usually when you're shooting a, a conversation, you have one actor appears on one, on like, let's say, let's say actor one appears on the left side of the screen. When you cut to actor two and facing actor two, they would be on the right side of the screen to kind of create a balance. Uh, th I didn't really notice that in the first act. It just all looked super awkward and was jarring I, I hated it to be honest with you i almost turned it off almost turned it off uh, but once we got into the bunker things started to look better uh, even the 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 uh, lighting was a lot better camera movements were better it just became a better film overall uh, as for acting uh this one's this one's different so last week we talked about uh, hellfest and in that movie the acting was great but the story was terrible. Here we have the reverse. <laughs> the story of Gehenna 
It was really good. It was an interesting story. It was compelling and, and um, full of little twists here and there and uh, some suspenseful moments, but the acting was so mediocre. <laughs> I didn't want to say bad, but the acting was mediocre. Doug Jones was was fine. He, like he he was he wasn't in the film that long. Only a few minutes was he in this film, uh, but he was fine. He's great. Lance Hendrickson was pretty good. <laughs> Rest of the actors were just okay. The other issue I had with uh, with the film was the writing. Uh, they have there's a character called Pepe, played by Sean Sprawling. He he was pretty much the comic relief and. Every joke felt forced and was poorly written and just came across like, you know what it reminded me of, to be honest, completely honest, when you're a kid and you watch Cinemax late at night and they have like these actors tell bad jokes <laughs> who are the comic relief in the soft core porn movies. That's what this was. It, it reminded me of that. It's really that bad. He was a great actor, but his dialogue was atrocious uh, and the direction was not very good just being honest completely honest here and i i wish i wish they had got some different actors or or a different director it it you can't it's it's hard to determine it was a bad acting or was a bad direction uh, cuz if you have a bad director you're going to have bad acting um i think if they had a different director it would have been a lot better <laughs> to be honest with you uh, and, and I hate to say that, but I mean, that's just the way it was. The, the story, though, was, was I liked the story. It had a lot of potential. It had a lot of mystery and intrigue, and uh, it was a little predictable at times, and that's okay. I, I can I can see past that. At least there was some a, a hint of originality, uh, and, and that's sort of like this film's saving grace is a story, and I, I say this a lot of times. If the story is good, I can get past the bad acting. And with this one, I was able to get past the bad acting. Now, it doesn't doesn't mean it's going to get a good rating, but I, at least I was able to get past all that and finish the film. Because I almost, I almost didn't until I got to the bunker and, and production value increased significantly. I just wish, wish they could have got a different director. As for jump scares, there weren't many. There were a few here and there, but... Nothing really got me. Um, there were several tense moments, but those were few and far between. The movie just wasn't scary. It's just a really good story. Not scary. Uh, a little a little tense. A few minor jump scares here and there. And that's really about it. Uh, would I recommend the film... Like, if you just absolutely have nothing else to do or just can't decide on what to watch, give it a shot. At least watch the first 45 minutes because uh, it's not that long of a movie. So it's like an hour and 45 minutes. Uh, if you can make it past the first 45 minutes, you'll be all right. <laughs> I would recommend go ahead and finish the film. So as for like a rating, though, out of five stars, I'd probably give this like a two. It's it, like the acting is, is it's bad. It's real bad. I was a little pissed off because they put Lance Hendrickson as top billing and he was, he was literally in the movie for like two minutes and that was it. Uh, he didn't even interact with any other actors. He was on, he was, it was a phone conversation where he was in an office building holding a phone to his ear and that was it. That's, that's the only bit he was in there. Uh, so if you're only, if you only plan to watch this movie because of Lance Hendrickson, Nah, skip it. <laughs> like you're you're just gonna be disappointed. Um, oh man, this one, yeah, it's it's hard because I hate knocking films, but you know what? They could have done a lot better, to be honest with. You. I mean, they just they could have, and that's just the way it is. So, yeah, two two stars from me. It just it was okay. <laughs> All right, so let's move on to new streaming releases. So on Netflix. We actually don't have very much at all from Netflix. We have two movies, I think. The first is Legion, which is more of like an action fantasy movie. Uh, this is like the movie about the angels and um, Paul Bettany and Lucas Black was in this with Tyrese Gibson. Um, 
This was the one from 2010 about angels battling each other. I never watched the movie. It just it didn't look appealing to me, so I never watched it. Uh, I don't know if it's any good. Uh, and then we have Denur, I Can See Ghosts. This is an Indonesian film adapted from a best-selling novel. This horror film shows Risa befriending ghosts until an evil spirit tries to take her sister to the other side. Uh, I will probably add this to my to my queue. Uh, oh, also, if you're into horror comedies, Tucker and Dale vs. Evil is back on Netflix. If you haven't seen this, this is like one of the best horror comedies I've ever seen scene i love this movie it is just so well written perfectly acted uh production value is there like this is like the perfect horror comedy and if you haven't seen it you need to go watch it uh and that's it oh you know what we also have the santa clarita diet which is on netflix we just finished that today uh to be honest with you it's not good uh <laughs> It always seems like in the third season, shows always just go down the toilet, and this one's no different. It wasn't, it wasn't horrible, but it wasn't good either. <laughs> it just uh, the writing was silly. Like a lot of a lot of the the plot, you're just like, really, th this is what they're doing with this show. Uh, it's just turning this goofy, and not even a good goofy, just cheesy not well written goofy silliness that that's just ridiculous it it it's not good it's not good uh season 2 was okay not as good as season 1 and it's just been on on a downhill slope and it's just going to get worse uh and i, I hate to say that cuz i like to show the first season of that show was amazing and now it's just like meh, you know, bleh. it it's turned into something completely stupid to be honest with you um, but I mean, if, if you like the show, more power to you. I just not into it anymore. Um, on Amazon, we have a few notable titles, but not a whole lot. Uh, starting with dark was a night. Now this was a film that was on, it's been on Netflix for a while. I actually did a review of this. Uh, I think I did a review. When did I review this? I can't remember when I reviewed this film. It was recently, though, like within this series of, of episodes of, of Scream Stream. Uh, this was actually a really good movie. I liked this one a lot. This one had uh, Lucas Haas, Kevin Durand, and Bianca, Bianca uh, uh, Kalchik, Kalich, Kalish. I don't know. I'm not going to try. Uh, <laughs> um, really good movie, and I highly recommend that you check it out. Uh, we have Then we have The Colony. This is one with Lawrence Fishburne, Bill Paxton, and Kevin Zegers. Uh, another really good film. Uh, All Hallows Eve. Now, if you remember my review of Art... Was it... Uh, what was the name of that damn movie that I reviewed that had Art the Clown in it? Terrifier. So, this is the anthology that featured Art the Clown from Terrifier. Uh, this one is a few years old. I actually really like this movie because uh, I love anthologies. This was a really good one, and this is why I was excited for Terrifier, and Terrifier turned out to be crap. I I hated that movie, to be honest with you. I just did not like it at all. Um, but All Hallows Eve was amazing. Same filmmaker. Um, yeah, I, I would recommend that you check out All Hallows Eve, uh, even if you didn't like uh, Terrifier. And then we have The Haunting. This is the one from, um, was it the 90s? Was it late 90s? Or 2000? What was this movie from? 1999. And this is the one that had uh, Catherine Zeta-Jones and Liam Neeson and Owen Wilson. I didn't like it. I thought it was bad. <laughs> I liked the original Haunting uh, from the 19, 1950s, 53, somewhere around there. I actually own that movie. I uh, recommend that one. Then we have Jennifer Eight, starring Uma Thurman, Andy Garcia, and John Malkovich. That was really good. Killer Clowns from Outer Space. If you haven't seen that, that's a classic. And then The Girl with All the Gifts, I really need to review that movie. Uh, I thought it was really good. Uh, if you haven't seen that, check it out. Uh, if you've read the book, Wifey says it's pretty close to the book. They changed a little, a few things here and there, but for the most part, it's pretty close. Uh, and she liked the movie as well. Uh, Jigsaw is back on, I don't think it ever, wait, did it, I know it was on Hulu, but I don't remember it being on Amazon. But Jigsaw is on Amazon now. What Lies Beneath with Harrison Ford and Michelle Pfeiffer. Excellent film. Really, 
or or highly recommend this one. Uh, and then we have uh, Annihilation. That's been on Amazon for a while. I don't know why it's in new releases or recently added. Uh, the Ruins. This is a movie about uh, the group go to South America to the my was it Mayan ruins or 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 the uh, Aztec ruins or I don't know one of them and the the trees come to life. Really good film. I liked it. And that is it for for Amazon. A few a few good things here and there. Uh, and then let's look at Shutter. Not a whole lot. Shutter. Actually, the only thing added to Shutter was. Um, uh, a new sort of ongoing series now with uh, Joe Bob Briggs. Uh, he's doing weekly double features. And the first in week one is Chud and Castle Freak. Actually, I reviewed Castle Freak not long ago. Um, a couple months ago, I reviewed that one from... This is one of the the early Full Moon films when Full Moon was actually making good movies. <laughs> this was one of the few. Uh, and Chud, which is a classic... I used to have that on DVD, but I don't know what happened to it. Uh, classic film. So check out Joe Bob Briggs. They're, he's going to be doing a uh, new double or hosting new double features every week. Uh, so definitely check that out. I'm glad to see that dude's back, back in action. Uh, and then was that it? Yeah. I don't see anything else. Oh, Jacob's ladder. I didn't, I didn't mention that. I didn't see it last week, but that one's on there now. Uh, Jacob's ladder. And there's a couple of others that I saw. I was like, wait, that wasn't on there when I mentioned this, when I did this last week. Um, let's see. Don't torture a duckling over your dead body. Uh, I think, I think that was it. Yeah, I think that was it. That's it. And that's all that's on Shutter. On Hulu, I don't, I can't tell what's, what's new on Hulu because they don't have like a, they don't, they don't really have a new section, but I see a new series called uh, Evil Talks, Chilling Confessions, which is kind of like a, it's kind of like these, like the show The Haunting or My Ghost Story or Haunted that's on Netflix or um, there's another one on Shudder. I can't remember what it was called, but yeah, that, the one on Shudder is really good. They're new Into the Dark series. They have a new one called Treehouse. Uh, all these movies look good. These movies look good. And I just, we haven't gotten around to watching them yet. Well, wifey said we need to watch those. And I think that's it for for Hulu. Uh, the Lullaby, which is an indie film, 87 minutes long. Uh, that's new. Uh, one thing on Hulu that I would recommend, if you have Hulu, is a film called Ghost Stories. And I might review this. Uh, I don't know. I've seen it a couple times. It's really, really good. Uh, and it stars the dude who played Watson in the Sherlock Holmes series. Um, oh, what was his name? Um, hell, I can't remember his name now. It's not going to give me. It's not giving me the info, which is super annoying. Uh, I like Hulu, and sometimes I hate Hulu. Like their website is just terrible. Um, so yeah, that, I guess yeah, that's it for the uh, new arrivals, the new streaming titles. Uh, and, uh, yeah, that's all we got. Uh, I, what did I go to theaters? Oh, well, we did go to the theater completely non-horror related, but if you haven't seen Captain Marvel yet, highly recommend that. That's like my third, that's like my third new favorite horror, horror Marvel film. Um, no, I take that back. Not third, fourth. That's my fourth fav favorite Marvel film now. Um, Really good movie. If you haven't seen it, it's worth going to the theater to see it. Completely worth it. So I recommend you check that out. Uh, that is going to do it for this week's episode of Scream Stream. Remember, I am a streaming horror games on Twitch. I stream Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, Tuesday through Friday, 945 to about midnight Eastern Standard Time. Uh, right now, I'm working on Outlast. Uh, I've actually got a few games going. Uh, Outlast, Alien Isolation, and Dead Space. And I'm looking at a couple other games. Um, but if you head over to twitch.tv slash Jimbo Lewis, you can actually follow me there. You can sub, support the channel. Um, uh, putting a lot of work into that. Because uh, that is, that's sort of like my new passion project. And uh, we're building up a really good community there. Um, uh, it, it's, it's, 
becoming kind of like a, a family. Uh, so if you want to go check us out, um, follow the family, uh, please. I welcome everybody. Never expected. Always welcome. Uh, so that's, that's yeah, that's going to do it. That's going to do it for this week's episode of Scream Stream. Uh, if you'd like to keep me outside of podcasts, of course, you can check out Twitch. You can also go to ScreamPod.com where you can find links to all of my social profiles. Uh, while you're there, you can listen to episodes or past episodes of Scream Stream and subscribe to the podcast via your favorite podcatcher like Apple Podcasts and Spotify. Uh, also, if you have a movie you'd like me to review, go to ScreamPod.com slash contact, fill out the form. Let me know if there's a film you'd like my opinion on, uh, and I will definitely watch it because I pick movies at random, and sometimes it takes me a while to pick a film. So if you have one you'd like me to check out, please let me know. You can also hit me up on Twitter. Scream underscore stream uh, is is like probably one of the better ways to uh, to reach me. Uh, also, you can join the Facebook page or at facebook.com slash screampod and post your recommendations there. Uh, and finally, music for Scream Stream was created by Kevin McLeod over at Incompotech.com. Until next week, I'm James Gass saying, if it was real, the cameraman would be dead too. Good night. <laughs>